Here's a Linux computer that can literally fit in your pocket. Let's check it out. I just love Raspberry Pi projects. You could use a Raspberry Pi for it just about anything. Whether you're working on an IoT project, maybe building a retro game system, the Raspberry Pi platform is limited only by your imagination. And if you're looking for a really fun project to work on, then one possibility is transforming your Raspberry Pi into a full desktop computer. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do today because right here in the studio, I have the DeskPi Lite, which is a Raspberry Pi case that actually transforms your Raspberry Pi into a full desktop PC. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a full review. And this is actually the second time that I've reviewed a DustPi product on this channel. About a year ago, I reviewed the DustPi Pro version two. I thought that was a very fun project to work on. And today I'm going to show you the DustPi Lite. And what is the DustPi Lite you might ask? Well, the DustPi Lite is a case for your Raspberry Pi that aims to transform it into a full desktop PC. It gives you easy access to all the ports, and even converts the Pi's micro HDMI ports into full-sized HDMI ports. And it even includes a fan. So this small form factor case for your Raspberry Pi gives you access to, well, everything. And it's also easy to assemble. Compared to the DustPi Pro version two that I reviewed last year, the light model has a much smaller footprint, which gives you more flexibility as to where to place it. But with the smaller size, it also sacrifices support for SSDs, but it also costs less than the DeskPi Pro model, so if SSD support isn't something that's important to you and you prefer a slimmer device, then this might actually be the Raspberry Pi case for you. The Lite model doesn't replace the Pro model, but it is sold alongside it. This gives you more choice actually, as you can go with the smaller Lite version, the one that I'm going to be reviewing today, or the larger Pro model. The DeskPi Lite can be ordered with just the case itself or a full featured kit that comes with everything you need to get started. They even have kits that include Raspberry Pis as well, so you can actually get everything you need all in one box. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the DeskPi Lite, which I have right here. I can't wait to get right into it. I'm going to give you my thoughts on this device, and I'm also going to show you how to assemble it as well. But before we get into the actual review, I just want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. The kit that I'll be reviewing was sent into the studio by the vendor. But just like always, I'll be giving you my honest and unbiased review of this product. The policy here at Learn Linux TV when it comes to reviews is that companies are not allowed to have any creative control whatsoever over the content on this channel. And I also don't allow any companies to screen a review video before you guys get a chance to see the video first. So in this case, 52Pi is seeing this video for the first time at the exact same time that you're seeing this video for the first time. In fact, the policy here at Learn Linux TV is that any company that sends in a product for review does so at their own risk, because even if I dislike the product, I'll definitely let you know. Anyway, I'm really excited to get into this review, so let's do exactly that. I'll have time codes in the description below so you can get right to the section that most interests you. So let's go ahead and dive in and check out the DeskPi Lite. First, let's begin the review with a quick overview of the DeskPi Lite itself. I did give you some basic information during the intro, but let's take a closer look. The DeskPi Lite is a Raspberry Pi case that aims to transform the single board computer into a full desktop. On the front of the case, we have a power button, two USB ports, an SD card slot, and also two LED lights. One of the LEDs will illuminate when the assembled unit is powered on, and the other one responds to disk activity. On the back of the unit, each of the Raspberry Pi's ports are easily accessible, and this case even converts the Raspberry Pi's micro HDMI ports into full-sized HDMI ports. When it comes to the sides, there's not really much going on with the right side of the case, but on the left side, you have full access to the GPIO pins. And those pins are exposed by removing the rubber cover that you see right here. When it comes to cooling, when you assemble this unit, there's actually a fan that's included along with a heat sink, and together that'll help keep your Raspberry Pi temperatures under control. The DeskPi Lite is also very affordable. It's available for as low as $29.99 US dollars, and that'll get you the DeskPi Lite case by itself. If you go that route, be sure you already have a Raspberry Pi board, an SD card, and power cable. There's also a few bundle kits available as well. The cheapest of these will set you back between $40 and $45 US dollars, 
And this kit will include the Despi Lite case itself, a power cable, an SD card with the adapter, a card reader, as well as an HDMI cable. And honestly, I see no reason not to go that direction at a minimum. If you were to buy the other components in that kit separately, the overall cost would easily cost you more than the difference between the DustPi Lite case itself and the lower priced kit. And even if you already have the accessories that's bundled in with the entry level kit, a few extra cables would probably be a good thing. There's also a few kits available that feature Raspberry Pi Model 4 boards right inside the box. One of them features the 2GB version of the Raspberry Pi, and the other one features the 4GB version. These kits in particular will set you back $159.99 and $189.99 in US dollars respectively. I'm not sure if these prices are due to the inflation around parts nowadays, as the MSRP for Raspberry Pi boards, the 2GB version and the 4GB version would be around $45 and $55 respectively, so if you purchase the $45 kit for the DustPi Lite, and then you purchase a 4GB Raspberry Pi separately, combined, the overall cost should be just north of $100. US However, with pandemic-related part shortages, these prices have unfortunately gone up. So you may or may not be able to easily find a separate Raspberry Pi board at the moment. Now something that I'll mention when it comes to the kits that feature Raspberry Pi boards, those units actually don't come pre-assembled. So you'll have to assemble the DustPi Lite yourself regardless. But that should be a problem for my audience since building things like this is fun for at least most of us. And even if you don't find that fun, the process of assembling this unit is very easy and it'll probably only take you about 5-10 to 10 minutes. After assembly, there are some additional tweaks required for both the fan as well as the front side USB ports, but I will show you the process of setting up all of that later in this video after the assembly section. In fact, let's take a look at the assembly process right now. The DustPi Lite kit that was sent into the studio for review is the version that comes with the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, specifically the 4GB version. This kit comes with the DustPi Lite itself, an SD card, a card reader, a power cable, an HDMI cable, and of course the Raspberry Pi that I've just mentioned. To assemble the DustPi Lite, you'll first remove the 8 screws on the bottom of the case, and inside the case is the daughter board that's responsible for extending the ports to the edge of the case, as well as some screws and thermal pads. The assembly process from here is actually very straightforward. The thermal pads that come with this unit have plastic covers on both sides, so make sure you remove those before you install them. You can also refer to the footage that you're seeing right now to understand where you should place those thermal pads. On my side, after I finished assembly, I actually had a few more thermal pads than I needed, so if you have a few extras left over, it's no problem. The fan and heatsink attaches to the GPIO pins on the board itself, so that's pretty easy to install. Another thing you'll have to do is attach the daughter board to the Raspberry Pi itself, and that's pretty straightforward too, but it actually has a very firm grip, so I had to gently work it in place, and it actually took a few seconds, and that's not really a problem. I think the firm grip is probably a good thing, so just go ahead and gently ease it into place, and you should be good to go. After that, the Raspberry Pi and daughter board combo is then placed into the case, and the eight screws will hold everything together. And actually, that's about it when it comes to assembly. Another thing that I'll point out is that the SD card doesn't come with an operating system pre-installed. But all you have to do is flash the SD card with your preferred Pi-compatible OS. And if you don't have a preference, then Raspberry Pi OS is a great choice. As for the flashing process itself, I will have a complete SD card flashing guide specific to the Raspberry Pi on this channel in the near future. But in the meantime, all you should have to do is download the Raspberry Pi imager, and that actually automates the majority of the process. And after assembly and flashing the operating system, the majority of the build is all set. However, the front USB ports will not work at this point, and the fan curve needs to be adjusted as well. So what I'll do right now is show you the process of correcting both. When it comes to the process of enabling the front USB ports, what you'll do is open up a terminal and then edit the slash boot slash config.txt file with your editor of choice. I used nano in this example, but it doesn't really matter. Once you have that file open, what you'll do is scroll all the way down to the very end, and then you'll add the code that you see on the screen right now. You can go ahead and pause the video right here if you need to copy this down. I'll also put this code right in the official blog post for this video that you could find in the description below this video. If you want to copy and paste, you could check out that link and, well, you can copy and paste. After adding the configuration, you could save the file and exit. 
In the case of Nano, what you'll do is hold down Control and press W. That opens up the Save dialog. Then you'll press Enter to confirm. And then you'll hold Control again and press X to exit the editor. Once you've added this configuration, the front USB ports will start working after you reboot the device. But don't reboot it just yet. We may as well add the other configuration change before we do so. The next tweak will set the temperature for when the included fan comes on. To configure this in a terminal, what we'll do is run sudo raspy-config to open up the Raspberry Pi OS configuration utility, and then once there, you'll scroll down to the performance options, and then P4 fan. You could then press enter to answer yes to the question that comes up next, and then after that, we'll actually edit the values for the fan. There's only two options that we need to set at this point. For the first one, we'll need to ensure that the pins are set to 14, and then we'll change the fan temperature to 60. After that, you just go down to finish, and then when it asks you to reboot, you may as well let it reboot. And when it does, both of the configuration changes that we've just made will actually take effect. And with those config changes, we're all set. The DeskPy Lite is completely assembled, completely programmed, and ready to go. And now that it is ready to go, what are my thoughts? Well, what I'm going to do is give you my overall opinion about the DeskPy Lite right now. The ability to build a small computer for less than 100 US dollars is a very amazing thing in my opinion. It just goes to show you how far computing has come since I first started. This is probably why I get so excited anytime I review a product that aims to turn the Raspberry Pi itself into a desktop. It's just a really cool thing. And of course, that actually got me very excited to try out the DeskPy Lite. And my overall opinion of the DeskPy Lite is that it's actually a really good case. I really like the fact that we have full-size HDMI ports, we have LEDs for power as well as disk access, and the entire unit is very easy to assemble. And during the time that I spent with this device, the temperatures never went crazy. What you're seeing right now is the idle temperature before I launched any applications. And then after opening up the web browser and a few tabs within that browser, the temperature went up a bit, but it still wasn't out of control. I think it stayed fairly cool. In my opinion, the temperatures were fairly reasonable. Also, when it comes to the fan, it's actually quiet. I didn't have to worry about noise at all. And that's great because some of the fans that are sold for Raspberry Pis these days are super loud. So it's really nice that the fan inside the DeskPy Lite is relatively silent. Now when it comes to the overall build quality, the majority of the DeskPy Lite is made of plastic. But even though it's made of plastic, it still feels sturdy. It also has rubber feet on the bottom to keep the case from sliding around your desk, which is also pretty cool. So when it comes to the build quality, I think it's pretty good. I actually would have preferred an aluminum case. I think that would have been a lot better. But even though this is made of plastic and not aluminum, the case is still pretty cool. Now when it comes to other Raspberry Pi cases, when you compare this against the Argon 1, which is a very popular case for the Raspberry Pi, that case is made of aluminum. So you might actually prefer it based on that. But there's actually pros and cons that are unique between the Argon 1 and the DeskPy Lite. So you can compare the features between the two and make a decision as far as which one is right for your use case. They both have unique features of their own. One aspect of the DeskPy Lite that's better than the Argon 1 is that the DeskPy Lite has six USB ports while the Argon 1 only has four. Another thing that I want to point out is that while I was researching the DeskPy Lite, I was unable to find a kit that included an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi. Again, they do have kits that feature the two gigabyte or the four gigabyte Raspberry Pi, but so far, I don't see a kit that includes the 8GB model. The 4GB Raspberry Pi that came with the unit that was sent into the studio performed very well for me, but then again, 4GB of RAM can easily become a bottleneck when it comes to desktop use, so hopefully at some point they'll make available a kit that includes the 8GB Raspberry Pi that would be even better. Overall, when it comes to the DeskPy Lite, I really enjoyed my time with this unit. It's really easy to put together, and it gets the job done. It literally transforms your Raspberry Pi into a desktop computer, which is just awesome. Now, before you buy one, just be sure to compare the features against the Argon 1. You might prefer one over the other, depending on what your use case happens to be. But if you do go along with the DeskPy Lite, I think you're going to like it. Anyway, let me know what you think of this review or the DeskPy Lite itself in the comments down below. I look forward to reading what you have to say. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe. I have some awesome content coming very soon. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.